And well, another army story. Yeah, and coming thick and fast. What else I'm, have we got? I'm, I'm being sort of given the riches here. Uh, but uh, this is top gear um, about the army commits millions of pounds of worth of equipment and time to help in top gear make their programmes. Um, it's a double-edged sword, and people will go on about the money and the cost. Um, but in essence, there's a lot of training goes on with this, you know, because the, the guys are able to do it. But I guarantee you... Should we ever have to it? shoot down any... or shoot, yeah. shoot people driving away in Lotuses and Ferraris? <laughs> we've got the skills to get them. Well, one wag on a military <laughs> website said, you know, we couldn't they have given the Irish Guards live ammunition to shoot the Clarkson? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it's good mean, PR, isn't it? Oh, it, it is. is. Good yeah. PR. I think so. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's such a strong supporter of the armed forces. Absolutely. And this does show them in a good light, even though it's a bit of fun. But the guys and the girls would be queuing up to try and get on any of these programmes because it would be it'd be one of those Gucci days out that you get. You know that's what they call it in the military. Anything good is Gucci. But um, <laughs> uh, I mean, but they, they love it. You know the guys absolutely love good. this sort of okay. thing. One last one from you. Um, yeah, I think this this is crazy story in this, in essence is a, about this young woman. Um, she was out in in Greece and uh, the. A cable got caught in the propeller that the, the ship boat, right. founded, uh, was drifting out to sea, and they thought that it was going to take. She had two, uh, two Dobermans with her, plus the puppies. And she's from Bedford. And she, <laughs> she jumped overboard after they'd called a rescue boat who wanted to charge them eight grand to, to rescue the boat. <laughs> so she said, We didn't have the money. So she got overboard with a box full of the puppies. The two other Dobermans uh, <laughs> swam to shore, and she swam with a life vest and the box on her head. Um, <laughs> and she didn't need to, really. She's quite attractive. <laughs> <laughs> just just wait, wait for someone Greek to come along and pick her up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is that how it works? Story. The pretty women get rescued for free. Yeah. 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 Let's rattle through yours, Anne. OK, um, we've probably heard the story, but this is um, the, the story of uh, um, a girl called Rosemary who was um, actually adopted as a three-year-old from Rio. From, she was a starving okay. orphan in the streets of Rio. Adopted, brought to this country. Um, she rebelled as a teenager against her, the, well, her adopted all. parents, yeah, uh, Christian parents. And so she went off to live in a hostel where she was systematically and appallingly bullied, bullied to death, because in the end... And the two girls who were bullying her uh, were attacking her to the point that uh, jumping out of a window was preferable and she did that and she jumped to her death. Now the court case was yesterday, those two girls have now been sentenced, but the parents, the adoptive parents have said, we forgive you. We, we're going to forgive you because we don't want to be shackled by bitterness, which I think is an interesting term, isn't it? But mm. also our prayer is that forgiveness will allow these girls to be released from the burden of what they did. And I just think it is absolutely astonishing. From the look of the smirk Two of one of the who, girls, you know, I don't know if she's just, actually felt any of the burden of what she's you done. You just don't feel see. they deserve forgiveness, but no. they're getting it anyway, yeah. in, a way, okay. in a way. So, I don't know. Um, another wonderful story in the Daily Mirror about um, a girl who was a uh, 20 year old girl who was out drinking and she was um, cut when a pint glass was shoved in her face by another girl thug. Um, and um, the, the, the trouble is the girl thug got away before anyone could get a proper uh, description or the police could find her. Police basically couldn't find her. She traced her on Facebook. She, she did all the detective work through Facebook, uh, well, spent days did. and days. Yeah, the victim did it. She recognised someone she recognized who was with She recognised a friend of a friend attacker, of hers. And she yeah. searched through. And she searched through Facebook, and in the end she found her, Good put the work. police onto her, and, and well, there's she a was... No, there's a fantastic twist. The police go, uh, go to the woman, uh, the attacker's home, and she's not there. The police come back to the victim and say, well, you found out where she lives. Is there any chance you could tell us where she works? <laughs> right? So the woman... Right, uh, the victim finds out where the attacker works and then the police go. That's what you call detective work. And she says, I'm just a receptionist, but I ended up doing all the detective Good for her. Work. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Good on her. Next one. This is fascinating. And the attacker, what did they, the attacker got, if I remember right, 100, 120 hours of community That's service? Right. yeah. For glassing someone. You see, that is not a I mean, punishment she could, she could have lost that her fits eyes. the crime. Yeah. Not. No, it's not. Um, this one is unbelievable. Yeah, right, the, the headline is Brain-Eating Tribe Helps to Enrich the Understanding of Mad Cow Disease. Now, this is a tribe called the Four <laughs> Tribe, who live in Papua New Guinea, who uh, practised for a while, for a sort of murky period in their history, they practised cannibalism. In fact, they specialised in eating the brains of it's their It's not a part of Germany, is it, by any chance? No. It's not, not been annexed at any point? Papua New Guinea. Okay. Um, right, but what is interesting is that um, doing that was not good for them and actually produced a mutation in their DNA. Mm. Um, and now they've actually... It's, Darwin would be... I mean, this confirms all of Darwin thing. Through... Uh, 
well, it's very complicated to say, but basically they've, um, they, they've shown that, uh, that humans can... The survivors have, have got a gene that effectively protects them from variant CJD. Thank you. Yes, there we go. Yes, so, and the gene has now survived through... And so, basically, so they have evolved. We can, so we can now As go back things, to feeding evolved. cows ground-up cows because we won't get CJD yeah, because of the, the cannibals of, in Papua New Guinea. The point of the story is that they've actually produced a human evolution, a st an amazing human evolution within about 50 years. OK, quickly, chemicals on women's face? 515 chemicals you bothered by that, on the average. No, because everything's a chemical. They say the worst thing is perfume, which uses up to about 250 different pe chemicals. So you spray quick spray of perfume that's 250 chemicals but not all of them are bad i mean whoever said all of them were bad okay h2o point. is a chemical for heaven's yeah no very very true very true uh, scott let's rattle through yours as well Time okay is short. uh never a day goes by where there's not a story about a study of alcohol or drink uh or food or whatever this one uh, put a smile on my face yeah i like this a lot a bottle of wine a day or half a dozen beers cuts the risk of heart disease by more than half. The more apparently the, the more you drink, the more you drink, the healthier your heart. Because they're, yeah, they're saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Except that it's not We're going to live forever, like Simon. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is what this is the difference in this in this uh, study. Pr protective effects aren't limited to moderate drinkers, but also to those who drink to what. A the downside is, of course, that whilst your heart will be healthy, everything else is going to fall around. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Shame. But the results showed that those who drank a little, a glass of wine or a bottle of beer every day had a 35% lower risk of a heart attack than those who never okay. drank at all. Anything else? Uh, yes, I've also got kites being grounded in Wiltshire. This is children who've been banned from flying kites oh. at a playground Health because there was a danger uh, they could get tangled up. Oh, of course. Um, <laughs> And there's a big no kite flying sign. Oh, isn't that terrible? It is. That's okay. bad, isn't it? No fun. No fun in Wiltshire. <laughs> um, also, we have the story on page four of the Times. Japan, where the national birth rate is low, a uh, country at risk of debt crisis as well. So Japan's biggest bank is telling their staff to knock off early. Uh, they all received an email on Monday saying, let's all enjoy some home and family time. <laughs> uh, the idea is, but, is by... But this, uh, is, this is extraordinary, because the idea of encouraging the Japanese to up their birth rate flies in the face of other research that's been published today, which echoes something I've been banging about on this show for the last couple of years, which is if you really want to tackle global warming and the falling apart of our environment, have fewer kids. So yeah, but actually, then your country starts to do badly because you oh, become top heavy. Boo who our country does people. badly, but the planet is yeah, saved. I know, I know. Yeah. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just thought I'd mention. It's good though. You get out of work by ten past five instead of seven. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I th I'm thinking the bar next door will probably be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're not always going to go home. No. How do you prove that you did the do last yeah. night when you come into work? <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, one last one for you. Uh, oh yes, one more. We've got uh, Dunshavin. This is good. This is... Take a look at this. What a house. Uh, that's uh, in Norway. This is from page 27 of The Sun. In Norway? In Norway, yeah. Uh, Jens Warner, who spent thousands... Do they have chavs in Norway? Pounds. I think, really? I think they do. They do. Oh, yeah. uh, painting the house. Uh, he says he's made the area more fashionable. I think not. OK. Mm. OK. After the break, should we pull out of Afghanistan or persevere? What are we fighting for? How will we know if we've won? Would sending more trips properly equip troops, I'll say that again, uh, help bring about victory? Uh, what do you make of Gordon Brown's hopes of a gradual withdrawal starting next year? 027 173 5 is the number if you've got something to say. And we're going to give this loads and loads of time, so give us a call and let the powers that be know what you think. We're back in three. How many Soviet soldiers died in Afghanistan between 1979 and 1989? 3,310, 6,310 or 13,310?